Welcome back, my cell biologists. We've been having a discussion about cancer, and now we're going to turn our attention to specific genes that are often involved in cancer. These are our oncogenes, which are genes that are typically upregulated or turned on or activated in cancers, and tumor suppressor genes, which are genes that are typically turned down or downregulated in cancer. So a lot of these are going to be genes that are involved in cell proliferation, in limiting and controlling cell proliferation, in helping cells survive or helping cells go through apoptosis. That's what we're going to see are these kinds of genes that are oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. So an oncogene is a gene that its presence can trigger the development of cancer. We talked about how viruses can cause cancer. Some of them introduce new genes into that cell. So some oncogenes are introduced by an oncogenic virus. Some of them can arise from mutating normal cellular genes, um, genes that we have in our cell to allow our cells to multiply and go through mitosis so that we can grow, so that we can repair our cells, um, but are mutated to grow in incorrect ways. So oncogenes are going to create proteins that stimulate excessive cell proliferation, that stimulate excessive cell survival, that inhibiting apoptosis. So you're building up cells inappropriately. The first oncogene we discovered was the Roux sarcoma virus, um, or was carried in the Roux sarcoma virus. You may remember talking about him, about Roux, a minute ago. Um, these are mutant viruses that have defects in SRC. And these defects can allow this, the cells to reproduce normally but not trigger cancer. So that lets us know that this SRC gene is the one that is involved in being an oncogene because when it's normal, it, it triggers cancer, and when it's not, you don't have cancer. Since then, we've identified over 200 human oncogenes. Usually, though, our cells are pretty good at protecting our bodies, um, and it takes multiple mutations to turn a normal cell, transform that into a cancer cell. There's five different ways here that we're going to discuss. Point mutations can alter genes, gene amplification, chromosomal translocation, um, insertional mutagenesis, inserting something, and local rearrangements. Oncogenes are going to arise from mutation of normal genes. Those normal genes are called proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogenes are normal genes that allow our cells to um, contribute to cell growth, to survival, how our cells normally regulate themselves. And the ways our proto-oncogenes are converted fall into some distinct mechanisms. One is a point mutation. This is when you change one single nucleotide in that gene. That one single nucleotide change leads to one single amino acid change, which can change how that protein product is created. It can change the shape. It can change how the, the active site is functioning in that whole, that whole enzyme. Gene amplification is when you are increasing the number of copies of a proto-oncogene. So that gene is still creating the normal healthy protein, but it's not creating it at a normal rate. So that abnormal increase in that protein product is going to lead to development of a cancer. A chromosomal translocation is when here you have this normal chromosome and you just break off their ends and put them back on backwards. So instead of having a yellow one and a green one, you have two that are a, mi a mix. Um, so this chromosomal translocation between chromosome 8 and 14 is found in Burkitt lymphoma. So this proto-oncogene called MYC is found on chromosome 8. And in the translocation, it gets put right next to this gene um, that's very active. And that causes MYC to start being transcribed a lot. So you get a lot of MYC protein building up. That is a translocation that does not change the gene product, the shape of it. You have the normal protein, but in an abnormal level, that leads to Burkitt lymphoma. Another translocation would be the Philadelphia chromosome, where the end of chromosome 9 and the top of chromosome 22 end up together. So these two genes, ABL and BCR, which should normally be separated on separate chromosomes, are now put together 
and they create one protein, one fusion protein together. Um, so this BCR ABL fusion protein, that's an abnormal protein that is associated with chronic myelogenous leukemia. So in both of these, we are creating a protein either in abnormal levels or an abnormal protein that encourages that cell to survive and multiply. Local DNA arrangements can change a proto-oncogene either by a deletion, so you're just taking something out, an insertion where you're putting something in, an inversion where you are doing something like this, or a transposition. Um, an inversion is when this gene is normally like this, you have this gene, you have this gene, then the DNA is broken and flipped. And when that DNA is flipped, you have this new combination gene here that is called TRK. Um, so TPM and NTRK are broken and rejoined. That gives you this weird fusion protein. Um, this is called the TRK oncogene. And this protein makes a dimer that is constantly active. So this kinase is going to be constantly adding phosphate groups to molecules. Um, and that's going to send a lot of signals controlling how your cell is growing and going through the cell cycle. Retroviruses are viruses that can insert their own DNA into your DNA. So they can insert an oncogene like we already talked about. But retroviruses can also sometimes cause cancer even without having an oncogene. What they do is they put their genes near a proto-oncogene, which turns on that proto-oncogene inappropriately, so that gene gets overexpressed. So this is called insertional mutagenesis. Um, we see this a lot in a lot of animals, but it's kind of rare in humans specifically. Oncogenes are gonna fall into six categories, growth factors. So you are creating a growth factor, you're sending out a signal for cells to grow. Receptors, so things that should be receiving that growth factor signal are suddenly going to be turned on in ways they shouldn't. Plasma membrane GTP binding proteins, that's something we'll come back and talk about later. Non-receptor protein kinases, that's something we'll come back and talk about later. Transcription factors and regulators of either the cell cycle or of apoptosis. So normally a good healthy cell is not going to divide unless there are growth factors stimulating it to divide. Um, monkey cells can be inv infected with this oncogene called simian sarcoma virus that will cause the cells to create a mutant growth factor. And by creating that growth factor, the cell is constantly stimulating itself to grow. Instead of getting a PDGF from an outside source saying it's time to grow, it's just telling itself to keep growing. Human sarcomas also can have PDGF-related oncogenes. Um, they can be caused by chromosomal translocation, creating a gene that's part PDGF, giving that signal, and part collagen, which is constitutively active. You're always expressing collagen, so you end up always expressing this oncogene um, and always getting that growth factor signal. Most receptors are going to be inactive, like this picture, until the growth factor binds. When the growth factor binds, it snaps them together and turns on the phosphate groups, so you start having the signaling pathway active below that. Oncogenes sometimes have constitutively active receptors, or actor, receptors that are always active. So here, this is a constitutively active receptor. It doesn't have a growth factor bound. It doesn't even have a place for a growth factor to bind. But it has this on signal here, these little phosphates that are going to constantly be sending this signal into the cell to grow. Whether or not there is a growth factor, it doesn't care. It is constantly sending the signal to grow. Some oncogenes are going to make the regular healthy growth factor here, but too much of it. Instead of having one, you've suddenly got three. So you've got too much of this signal activating that cell. Some growth factor signaling pathways, so downstream from this, you start turning on other stuff. One thing you can turn on is a transcription factor. Transcription factors are going to cause gene transcription. So you are changing how your genes are being expressed. So oncogenes might make mutant transcription factors. They might make excessive transcription factors. 
you've got transcription factors turning on genes in ways that they shouldn't be. Transcription factors can activate genes with products that control proliferation and survival. So now you are amplifying that cell's ability to proliferate and survive. Some oncogenes are just going to inhibit apoptosis. So your cells are not dividing when they should be. They're stimulating cell division when they should be undergoing cell death. Kind of the opposite of an oncogene is a tumor suppressor gene. Tumor suppressor genes are genes that normally suppress tumors. So they are active in good, healthy genes, but they can be inactivated, they can be lost, and that is going to lead to cancer. Tumor suppressor genes are normally genes that slow down cell growth. Um, there are a few dozen genes in human cells that have properties of tumor suppressors, and we frequently see them um, mutated or inactivated in tumors. So we talked about some different ways that we can alter our genes, um, but usually there is not just one change and that's it. Sometimes you'll see a person that has an inherited defect in a tumor suppressor gene. So they already have one copy of their chromosomes of that gene that is mutated and they'll see inherited cancer susceptibility um, but to totally lose their tumor suppressor gene function, they'd also have to have their other allele, the healthy allele of that gene be mutated. So if people inherit one mutation of a gene, there's a greater chance of getting a second mutation. That's what the second hit, the two hit hypothesis is. Okay, our most common tumor suppressor gene we see mutated is P53. P53 gene is mutated in almost half of cancers. This is where we're gonna start talking in our next video, discussing what is going on with P53. Um, and then we'll finish up our chapter talking about the hallmarks of cancer, or kind of a, a summary of what we see in cancer cells. All right, I will see you soon. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.